if there's one class that can truly do a little bit of everything, it is the engineer class. The engineer class is the class to go to if you want to build up structures, defenses, and just anything in general. And if you want to cause a little bit of destruction at the same time, they can do that too. The engineer can do a bit, but also it can require a lot of thinking. But we're going to break down this class in a remastered version of how to play engineer right. Now I do want to go over the loadouts really quickly here and just talk about them briefly. Starting off with the engineer, you will get the standard issue class. This is the building class, so you'll typically have a rifle, some mines, the wrench and hammer, as well as a blowtorch. From there, once you get to level 3, you will unlock the sabotage class, so I'll call it. This is the one class with the satchel charge, but you can't build anything. You will not have a wrench. You will have a hammer, though. And finally, you have the British and Americans that have the field engineer class, which is basically just the standard issue, but with a submachine gun and some grenades instead of mines. Now, your first priority as an engineer, say if you load up into a game, is to check to see if you need to build any nodes or not. This is to make sure the commander has enough resources to actually call in things like airstrikes, vehicles, airheads, you name it. And the easiest way to tell if you need to build any nodes or not is to simply open up your map and check the numbers at the top of the map that outline how much supply for either munitions, fuel, or manpower that the commander is getting. If the number is 60 per minute, then you're good. You don't need to build any more nodes. But if it's 50, 40, or 30, then you need to probably build some nodes. And as the engineer, that is one of your jobs to do. And you want to build nodes for two different reasons. First one being you'll get experience by building nodes, you get points. And as they stay alive, every minute you'll get 10 points per minute. Meaning if you have all three nodes built that you can build, being one of each, being the munitions, manpower, and fuel, you'll get 30 points per minute as long as they're still alive. The second reason is to overall provide more resources for the commander so they can call in more things like bombing runs, strafing runs, airheads, heavy tanks, you name it. And if the commander has more resources to throw into the fight, then your chances of winning are at least going up. Now, one thing that I'm going to go over with in this entire video that I'm going to start here with is that you will need supplies to build things in Hell Loose, like the nodes that I've already mentioned. Now, this can come from using supply truck supplies, where you can drop a supply box of 150 supplies, the commander airdrops in 100 supplies for you, or a support player drops you a box of 50. As long as you have supplies, you can probably build something. Now, when it comes to building nodes, you'll need at least 50 supply to build one singular node. Combine that by two more, you'll need 150. And we'll go through all of this with all the other things you can build with the engineer class. Now that we've talked about nodes, let's talk about the defenses you can build as an engineer, as a standard issue or field engineer class. Starting with barbed wires. These are very cheap defenses coming in at 10 supplies, and it takes 10 seconds to build one single piece of barbed wire after placing it down. And barbed wires are perfect for filling in gaps in a defense or natural obstacles that are already present, such as maybe there's a hedgerow with a hole in it that infantry can get through, or a wall that has a massive hole blown through it that you can patch up essentially with a barbed wire and stop people from getting through that entrance and force them to go elsewhere to get inside your defenses. The only major knock on barbed wire is that vehicles can go right through it with ease, but no one can cross it, whether that means above it, under it, or anything like that. So if you're on top of a vehicle going through barbed wire, you will get knocked off because there's an invisible wall above the barbed wire. But that's barbed wire essentially in a nutshell. After barbed wire, you scroll down one on the list and you come up to the Hedgehog or Belgian Gate, or simply known as just tank traps or tank obstacles. These are obstacles built to essentially slow down vehicles or add just another layer to your defense if needed. Now, for the Americans and British, you can make hedgehogs, which is what you see on screen now, or for the Germans, you can make Belgian gates, which are a lot bigger, but they cost a little bit more and take more time to build. So for the hedgehogs, they take 25 supplies and two seconds to build. You can build up a three of them, where with the Belgian gate, it takes 10 seconds to build and 30 supply to build, which you can only build two of them instead of three. The third thing you can build as the engineer is the barricade. And much like the bunker that we're going to talk about after this, is upgradable once you build it. But we'll get to that in a little bit. 
The barricade is a piece of cover that you can build for fairly cheap at the start and use it for a multitude of things. Mostly being for cover to shoot behind, mount machine guns, maybe put in blockers on the road for barbed wire so that way vehicles can't just go through barbed wire and just overall have a lot more uses than any of the other things you can build as the engineer. Now to build the barricade and get to level one, it'll take 15 seconds and 20 supply to build to level one. But as I've already said, you can upgrade these barricades a couple of times. Starting here, what you'll see is just the level one version of it. And overall, it's just a piece of cover that's got wooden logs on it and you can shoot from. Nothing too, too impressive. You can upgrade to level two, which takes 50 supply and 30 seconds to build. And all it really does is it swaps out some of the logs for sandbags. As far as I recall, it doesn't truly add too much defensive cover. It might reduce some of the effects of grenades, but I do not know that off the top of my head. I'm just throwing that little disclaimer out there. But after level two, you can upgrade it again to level three. And this takes 45 seconds and 75 supply to do that. Now this will actually alter the cover a little bit here. Once you build it up to the level three, you'll have some added sections along the sides that will allow for more cover and make for a, I would say a better MG position for it. But as you'll see here, once we get finished building, that there's stuff on the sides now, making it for more cover so you're not fully exposed from the sides as much and you can actually shoot out from them and be standing. Across all factions, the barricades are pretty much the same, barring a couple small iterations, but they get the same job done. From the barricade, we scroll one down and we can build a bunker. Now, you can only build one of these, and although it does cost a lot to build and upgrade, once it's fully built to level three, it offers a lot of defensive capabilities. So, the level one bunker takes 30 seconds to build and 75 supplies to build, and it's pretty simple. It's basically just a barricade, but on steroids with a barricade in the front with barricades flanking the sides. And even if you don't have the supply to actually build up the bunker to its full capacity, it's still useful in this defense role as extra cover that you can use alongside barricades that are a little bit cheaper to build. But as you see, it's basically like level one barricades. It's nothing extremely special, but it's got cover on all sides and you can move to different positions. Now, as I also said, you can upgrade this position as well. Now, if you want to upgrade this bunker to level 2, it'll take 45 seconds to fully build and 150 supplies to get it to level 2. And overall, again, looks very similar to the barricades I've already outlined with the added sandbags. But now, if we upgrade to level 3, which takes 60 seconds and 225 supplies to build, we get a very good little structure that, as far as I know from the previous updates, is still impervious to bombing raids from the inside for the most part. And what you see here is the American iteration of the bunker where you've got cover on all four corners and in the center where you essentially have a sandbag pillbox, which is very cool to defend from. And you can, if you do it right, can put a garrison in, but that's probably a video idea for another day. So although the bunker does take a lot of resources and time to build, if you can get one of these up, even if it's not in the best location, it can still offer some defensive capabilities for you and your team. The last item you can build as the engineer is the repair station. This will take you 15 seconds and 50 supplies to build, and their only function is to repair damaged vehicles. So these are nice to have on the front line if a tank crew does not have a single blowtorch among their entire crew and needs repairs and does not want to go back all the way to the HQ to that repair station. But at the same time, these are very vulnerable items that can be destroyed by rockets, satchel charges, AT rifles, or anything like that. But they still exist and can be used in very limited roles. So now that we've talked about all the things you can build as an engineer, how can you truly apply endgame and play the class more or less correctly? There's a couple different ways you can go about this. In warfare mode, there's not too many instances where you'll truly be needing to build up a point or have the ability to, because the whole point of winning in that game mode is to hold the middle objective or better and that takes a long time to get supply trucks to the front line now if the front has stagnated and the middle point is getting pressured that much you could potentially build some defenses but be forewarned that by building some of those defenses 
if you lose the point, expect those defenses to be used against you. But that's why you want to place your offenses in front of the enemy attack, not anywhere behind where the defending team is going to be at most of the time. The best case scenario where you can build up an objective is if you're playing on offensive as a defending team. What you see on screen is me and another engineer building a bunker on the Hill 15 objective, which is on a hilltop at Hurricane Forest back towards our HQs. And this objective is perfect because there's a straight line shot essentially from the top HQ to this objective to get supplies from a supply truck. And there's a decent amount of ground all over the place to build on. Just a little bit of weird terrain here and there. And the way you want to outline your defense is going to depend on how much resource you have, how much time you have, and what the lay of the land looks like. Is there a lot of open space like this map, or is there a lot of actual natural cover? And this could be to your benefit to try and either balance your defense and maybe spread things out all around, or focus on particular sectors like north, west, south, east, whatever, and figure out where the defenses need to be most. Where are your allies going to be sitting that they can get to the defenses quickly, but unscathed at the same time? Every objective is unfortunately different, so I can't really give you a clear-cut way to fortify every objective, but at least I would say either a balanced approach or if there's a side that is really exposed with no cover, maybe fortify that side more than the other sides. Now, I do want to throw in some last-second tips here just before we move on to other aspects of the engineer class, and that is the fact that you can place down another blueprint and erase your oldest building of what you're building. So in this case, I have the barbed wire in front. The one on the far right, if you notice, went away, and I can rebuild the wire. This is a very quick way to remove anything you've already built without having to dismantle it really quickly. So there is that. And for building the nodes, this is a little different. You cannot simply dismantle your nodes really quickly. You actually have to go up and dismantle them manually, which will take a while. So just throwing that out there. And for protecting your nodes, you could always draw on some anti-personnel mines to try and cover them or maybe cover them in barbed wire. And it should, at least to a degree, slow down enemy recon teams and so on and so forth. The last major thing besides building that the engineer can do or the regular standard issue engineer can do is have a blowtorch to repair vehicles in the field, which is very convenient for tank crews who, if it's a very heavy combat situation and getting out of the tank might result in one of the tank crew members getting killed, then it allows them to keep fighting in their tank safely and engage enemy targets while you are out there repairing the tank for them and so they can keep fighting, you can repair it, you get experience for it, everyone wins. The blowtorch as well will repair modules first before the hull. So just keep that in mind when repairing the tank, not that you unfortunately have a choice to the matter. Just little things I want to throw out there to help you out. Once you unlock level 3, you will have access to the combat engineer or the sapper or pioneer, whatever you want to call it. This engineer is not about building, but by destroying. They come with the very powerful satchel charge. The Satchel Charge is very good at destroying tanks, but it's also very good at destroying barricades, bunkers, or anything the engineer can build. They're also very, very good at taking down garrisons if you can't get close enough to them to destroy. And like what you're going to see here in just a second, I'm going to blow up some of the cover and the garrison nearby. Now, the Satchel Charge radius is about 25 to 30 meters, and even though if you're behind cover or in an indestructible building, it does not matter. If you are within the 25 meters, you are dead. So that's the big thing with the satchel is it's really good for just overall destruction, which fits this class very well. Now, I'm placing down a satchel or if a friendly satchel has been deployed, if you see red, you're dead is the phrase we like to use with satchel charges from allies or yourself. If you see the red timer that is by the satchel when you've placed it and you've run away, maybe you're 20 meters away and you still see it, that means you're still within the radius of his explosion. So get clear of that explosion, or if you're just wanting to sit there until the end, then be my guest too. But that's all I have for this video. I hope you got something out of it and try to remake this video to just modernize it a little bit. But thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.